Let's get this relaxing music out of here. There is no relaxation allowed. So previously on tabletop games, um, you slid down the slip and slide of pipes on frictionless grime, flying out of the end to narrowly avoid falling into a massive uh, pipe. <coughs> uh, yet another one. And arriving in a chamber with some hastily built shelters, finding its inhabitants, Twig was reunited with uh, Zom, Jessica, and his former leader, Anna. Zom relayed the current state of affairs to the group, uh, surmising that Jorman, who is head chef at the inn that the party was staying in, must have been uh, reduced to ash or dust or something like that. Otherwise disintegrated, uh, and Manash, who is unaccounted for, must also have met the same fate. Uh, everyone's food and drink soured, evaporated, or otherwise ruined, and it became apparent that someone had happened upon the group. A <coughs> door swung open, and a figure clad completely in metal and armed with two scimitars that only uh, Twig and uh, his companions could see. Um, very shortly, everyone voluntarily cursed themselves by touching the slab. <laughs> And in order to see their assailant, um, I guess except for Juman, who was, who was not present, um, and defeated it by blasting it off the rim of the pipe into the unknown lightless steps below. Unfortunately, during the conflict, Jessica was turned into dust and her wailing specter attacked, uh, and Zom lost concentration on the magical circle, confining Anna's, ron uh, sorry, Anna's wandering body, who, unleashed, descended upon Twig, uh, dealing with this event in the same manner, <laughs> Zom was uh, Zalia knocking, blasting them both off into the depths of the pipes. Uh, Zom was awash with remorse and bid his hopes to Twig. Uh, Juven, you awake feeling a bit energized amid your grogginess and find out that your short rest has staved off a bit of your weariness. You're only at minus five now. Instead of minus six. Short rests from now on will uh, get rid of one stack of weariness. Okay. As you come to consciousness, uh, you see a gnome like pressing a jeweled flower into Twig's possession, and he gets up and shambles over to a table, writes a fallen chair, and slumps down into it. While everyone else, you notice two men awakening. What would you like to do? <laughs> Thalia is still doing the the thing of trying very hard to use a spell slot she does not have. You can Jim and you gaze over and you can see uh Zalia um kinda like melt or crept down. Um or like squat squatting or whatever towards the rim, looking down over the edge and doing like somatic motions trying to will the arcane weave to grant some kind of effect, but try as she might however many times, the effect does not come. Ah. Uh, hey, uh, is everyone alright? Am I interrupting? Uh, what have I missed apparently? Astish? Hey. <laughs> well... It's a long story. And... Frankly, not mine to tell. I... Oh, uh... <laughs> I got two pastiches. I just gotta refresh. Should be one. Yeah. Okay, let's go with me now. <laughs> I see. Now, I am. I have nothing else to really say. I mean, are you feeling any better? Well, I feel uh, like there's a 
less weight on my shoulders, uh, slightly. Yeah. A little tired still, though. That's good, at least. Ugh. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going anywhere quite yet. Uh, if you do not mind, everyone, I would like to take a short rest. That, that is quite all right with me. You all could. You look as if you need a break. <sighs> Pastiche turns to twig some of us more than others twig was just like staring down into the hole but he turns to pastiche and just nods yeah i can watch over while you all take some time for yourselves Mechanically short rest. <laughs> sure. Uh, this is the first one that you guys have taken today, so it's only 30 minutes. But you can take long if you like. Yes. Yeah, you've got 30 minutes to spare. Do whatever you want. I do. Vele isn't going to move unless someone drags her. I mean, you all look over here. You would continuously doing the same act, just <laughs> methodically. How? What level spell slot can you recover from a short rest? Enough, but she's not gonna do. She's not gonna rest. Well. The magic isn't coming to you now, then it, it simply won't come to you. No matter how many times you try to make the incantation. He kind of makes a wheeling noise. Take the moment to recover. Out of character Everyone. question. Uh -huh. Uh, did I canonically do a short rest in the last? Uh, in the last yeah, you can. <clears throat> you can do another one. Yeah, because uh, there's nothing that's marked on my shot on my sheet right now. There's not a what? I haven't taken one apparently on my sheet, oh. so it's just making sure. Yeah, you can hit short rest, um, and you can choose to spend hit dice if you want. And then, uh, yeah, for your your um, <clears throat> Zalia, for your hit dice, yeah, just uh, remember or write down uh, that you have minus one max. Um, I've got it written down as well. Okay.
I, mean, I think, like, during the time of, of uh, just short rest, like the 30 minutes, at some point, um, Michaela would properly go to Chumin and give a summary of, of what had happened, like what the meeting, or what the, us meeting the, uh, the gang, and how they were trying to find a way to cure wandering, about the, the actual conflict, the fight, and how it all ended. Human just silently nods. Uh, oh, these people went a lot to Twig and now they are in a very dark place. Well, no, fortunately, I am no stranger to the, this situation. Yeah. But. I think Twig will overcome it. Yeah. He'll do it for the ones that... He'll do it for the ones he loved. It is not so... I'm confident in Twig, but... I am... more unsure of... Well... What's that? Um... Uh, sorry, what was his name? It's like spacing. The gnome? Uh, yeah. Zom. He's... He's spoken very little since it happened. I see. Ah, well... I suppose it is up to him and Twig on whether they move forward or not, but for now they should at least have the time to do what they need to do. Indeed. I guess I'd explain to also explain to Truman. Um, I plan on when we return topside and reconvene with the Merchant Queen. I plan on presenting this holds out uh, Jessica's pendant uh, as proof of our dealing with her quote unquote rats. This pendant that Michaela holds up, Jimin, um, seems to be like on a leather band <clears throat> that would be like something you would tie and hold hair. Um, just so it like, strips the leather and then it has a charm on it uh, that is appears to be made of silver. Um, it's like a crescent moon um, and in the middle like of the crescent there's a harp um, welded to the sides or to the inside. <clears throat> In Schumann's face, uh, Schumann's expression is, is sort of uh, surprised uh, once he realizes the implications for the Merchant Queen. Uh, I, 
I understand then. Uh, will be our move after the Merchant Queen then. It's a good question. Well, I suppose we'll face when it comes. Perhaps it might change <laughs> depending on what we are presenting exactly to her. Or rather what Korakon is presenting. Right. I feel it could be sooner than later, but all the more reason. <sighs> there are still things we need to see before. Well, well, I need to see before I can feel I can make any choices moving forward. Right, I understand. Well, take the time you need. Uh, you all at least have the Ember Blade, and that at least has been in. that has dealings with me at least, so. I will be with you guys for the most part, so take the time you need, but at least now. Nods. Human stands up and kind of stretches, gets himself out of being in bed for the most part. Pastiche is just sort of seated on the planks near Schumann's bed, lost in thought. Velia eventually passes out, arms still outstretched over the pet. Twig is sort of like, like pacing back and forth, and he'll eventually say to the rest of the group, um, I don't think I can really sit still for much longer. We should probably, I just need something to occupy myself. Was everyone else ready to get going? I've no unfinished business here. Likewise. Though, there might be some difficulty waking Thalia. You hear the creak of some wood behind you just as the gnome gets up. And he walks a couple paces over to you, Toya, you need feel a little tap tap on your uh, on your shoulder look behind you see on the gnome he's just holding out a little vial like a test tube looking vial and in it is a uh, crimson liquid he's holding it out to you offering there lad pick it up it'll help you It'll help your hearts and stop your bleeding. Jake takes a look at it and then he drinks it. Tastes like artificial cherry. <laughs> tastes like red. Yep, it tastes like red. <laughs> uh, but go ahead and roll uh, 2d4 plus 4. <clears throat> your wounds close, your bleeding stops, and you feel a little less in pain. That many hit points. <laughs> Zom nods. And then uh, also asks you to roll a 1d100. <sighs> he 
87, you say? For a moment. <laughs> you feel much lighter. As if you could walk on air. Zom nods and looks at you. Aye, right, looks like it's working already. Here, Twig. Uh, come on over. Uh, I'll show you something. <coughs> he waves you over to uh, to his workbench-looking thing. Um, Twig, you may or may not as, uh, may or may not notice, but everyone else, uh, Twig's no longer walking on the ground. He's walking like maybe a couple inches above. <laughs> <laughs> Um, taps uh, his spell book, which is this great like mound of a thing. It's um, like it looks like a binder, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. like, like a like a like a notebook, but it's it's bound with metal rings, and the metal rings are like copper, um, iron, lead, silver. There's there's all these different kinds of metals that the rings are made out of. Just lead, silver, gold. There's some that are even frozen mid-transition from one metal to another. Mm -hmm. um, he taps on it and he gives you a smile. Uh, you're right. It, uh, what you said earlier, she was already dead. It's nothing we should get wrapped up in. It was just a body. Her soul is out there somewhere. We'll find it, eventually. I, I was recalling the time that we that we brought you on. That I, the magic I helped uh, teach you. It's all your... Uh, you were able to put to use the floating dagger spell that, that, we, uh, <laughs> that we helped you learn. It's pretty cool. I can teach you another one if you have time. Another one? What did you have in mind? Well, if there's more creatures out there like that, we could use something perhaps more offensive in nature as well as defensive. Your floating daggers could create a storm at a location that you like. Sure. If I were gazing down just a cloud of swirling daggers, I would think twice about entering in that space and teach how to manipulate them. Maybe trick people into thinking that you have some sort of telekinetic power. <laughs> Sounds impressive. Are you sure I would be able to learn something like that? Perhaps. The time and know how. Do whatever you want. As long as you put your mind to it, Twig. Twig nods. Then, let's do it. May take some time for you to understand the, the jargon a bit. Leaving no help, but I don't mean to hold you up if you have somewhere to be. He looks out <coughs> behind like pastiche and Truman and everybody. Uh, Twig will turn to the group. If the rest of you wanted to go on and let the Queen know, then I wouldn't mind. I'm not sure I would want to be there for it anyway. Well, if you stay behind, uh, don't let anyone see you leave, yes? Twig nods. Where should we meet up afterwards? I'm 
not particularly familiar with this area myself. Uh, Chuman, any ideas? Chuman thinks for a moment. How about that arrow place that we've met, that we purchased that before? At least in the crowd, I think it would be better than going directly back to the inn. Unless there are no objections, unless there are objections to that. Well, I haven't been there myself, but if you know the way, we were all we're all walking the same way. Uh, I believe you may have stopped at a shop that I did not. Fair point. Yeah. And she motions over to Michaela. Do you, Michaela? Do you have any uh, any spots in mind for meeting up? This music, there was this great uh, juice bar that I went to last night. Uh, and we get, we'll go on to describe where it was. The late night J bar, I believe. The J bar? I know the place. I've only been there once before, but I could find my way there. I think we could use something of a drink after this. Oh, what it is. Then we should meet there. It sounds a whole lot better than an arrow store, personally. <laughs> Then, then I guess it's up. Right. Uh, meanwhile, Mikhail would also be like trying to gently shake, like not shake, but like stir uh, Azalea awake. Azalea awake. He will eventually get up, and the instant she is conscious, she's gonna run down the pit. (laughs) (laughs) I had a feeling. Uh, Zelia, wait! (laughs) Zelia immediately weaves her form. A a meeting of magics. Of, uh, she shapes shifts some form and then uh, applies some sticky magic to her uh, <coughs> to her extremities and uh, skitters down and out of sight. There she is, gone. Bye. Hmm. Yeah, she's gonna look for a bottom. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. The music changes. No way. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, Zelia, can you see in the dark? No. Okay. <laughs> um, Zelia, as you are going down and down and down and down mm-hmm. and down, um, you hear many sounds echoing around you. Uh, many of them your own, as you sp- uh, squirch and, s- and squitch and. Uh, th- like along the, the grimy tunnels sorry, the grimy tunnel singular <laughs> uh, as you just go down um, <clears throat> over times uh, not cuddle time <laughs> you switch from feed me I'm dying to let me on your lap or I'll kill you mode <laughs> <laughs> um, you Spend probably 10 minutes skittering down um, 
easily because of your magic. Um, uh -huh. Before you are met with um, an incline or a decline, an angle <laughs> uh, that then immediately spreads into four cardinal directions. Um. So what's like straight down? Is there a floor there, or is it just split up and all going down? Uh, straight down is a ramp, and then huh? it then also continues going straight down, and then from this kind of down is also like an intersection. So here, let me let me draw it. Uh, so say you are here. Huh? Uh, so here's the tunnel you're currently in. It goes like so. Okay. And then like so. So like here's where you are. There's a slant. <clears throat> and then it goes uh, also down, but also north, south, east, west. Okay. Uh, she's probably going to try to look directly in the center there. Uh, does the pipe do, is is this like flat here? Or is it uh, like it, this is is this, or does it go like another pit? Like there's five, it goes five ways effectively. It goes five ways. Okay. Well, she's going down. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's see here. You, you said you look around though, or uh, is it sure. She'll she'll look around, but she's gonna keep following, going down. Uh, give me a perception check with disadvantage, of course. Okay. Because that's how it is when you can't see. <laughs> can't see shit, Captain. <laughs> oh. Alright, a two, that's probably accurate. <laughs> There's uh -huh. no light. Here. Yeah, uh, you look around, you can't see anything because it's dark. Um, uh -huh. You hear the sound of rushing water. Um, you get down, you go down some more. Um, let's see here. There you find maybe about mm -hmm. uh, 50 feet. No, sorry. 50. Probably like 150 feet down from that mm -hmm. location where there was the intersection. You find a, mm -hmm. uh, you find a grate uh, that, that bars your path. Um, you, you touch and feel out around it. There appears to be a square checkered gate um, huh? where there, the openings are about like um, as wide as your palm. Um, and okay. then the kind of rivets that form the, like the, the, the metal rods that form these gates, those are probably um, half the size of your wrist. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's it's a big opening. Uh, water pours through this. Um, is there anything stuck in this grate? Uh, currently, you, because there is water pouring on you <laughs> from the from above. Uh, no fucking but way. Go ahead and uh, make another perception check with it, with disadvantage. Uh, can I make that investigation? Yes, you can. To like look around. Okay. And can I be like thorough about it for no disadvantage or just disadvantage because I can't fucking see anyway? Uh, Let's see. Yeah, you can you can not rely on your sight and just focus on another sense. Sure. Okay. A twenty-one's pretty good. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me D one hundred. Alright. I, I will say she's looking specifically for Anna. Okay. <laughs> Wherever she ended up. Oh my god. One hundred <laughs> on the D one hundred. Alright. Pretty darn good. Um <laughs> let's see here. So you find alternatively like pieces of the machine she blew up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you 
get down on all fours, which is an easy thing for Zalia. That's one of <laughs> <laughs> that's a visit she finds herself in uh, often as you skitter and scuttle about on many different surfaces. Um, especially while you're spider climbing, it's very easy. So you get down on all fours and you start looking around. Um, you. Um, I will tell you what you find and what you don't find. Uh, okay. You specifically do not find uh, any piece or part or uh, anything about the um, very metallic creature um, that you knocked down here. Not their weapons, okay. not any of their armor, not anything. Um, that is definitely not here. Uh, you do find a... find um, Anna's uh, body uh, that is in an unfortunate state down here after falling a, a large a long ways. Um, huh? Well, I guess actually you're not sure if it's Anna's, uh, so I take that back. <laughs> uh, but after after touching uh, and, and feeling and seeing what this, it doesn't try to kill you or anything, so that's fortunate. Um, huh? You ascertain a feminine body with, um, let's see, Celia's smart, so I imagine she'll have a keen memory, with a Horns. Tire. Yeah, w huh? Yeah. With, with a tire oh, that would uh, uh, suggest what you saw on the person. You can probably determine by touch that this might have been that tiefling. And, uh, yeah, yeah, horns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you feel up and then uh, yeah, get the horn shape in your hands and in your in your mind's eye that is always turning and turning with ideas, you uh, yeah the, uh, the body of Anna is here. Um. I don't know if she knows what she wants to do at this point. Um, they'll probably, I, I think one, of, if I remember correctly, one of the knives ended up up here, right? Upstairs? Uh, yeah, it seems that way. <clears throat> okay. Is the other one there? Uh, you feel around the waist and, um, you find its, uh, sheath or its scabbard. Um, it's, it's holder. Mm -hmm. Uh, you find that empty on her waist. Um, and then moving over to the hand, you find it held in like just this death, this death grip. Hmm. Which I assume is gonna be difficult for little, uh, no strength changing wither to get out. Um. It would take you some time, but perhaps. Um, uh. You could like and pull like like rigor mm -hmm. mortis is powerful yeah uh, does she have anything that would help with that uh no o other than mage hand which presumably does not help that much no mage hand is uh weaker than yourself yeah uh I think she's going to obsessively try to do that. Okay. Roll me a strength check, just to see how long it takes. Because eventually you'll get it, you're an adventurer. Mm -hmm. Takes you some time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it takes you an amount of time that... Uh... 
Like you, you ascertain that it would like you could get it, but it would be an amount of like uh, you would have to apply some, some scientific method to this <laughs> if you're gonna uh -huh. do it cleanly. Um, it may take you uh, longer than your companions are willing to wait if you care. I don't think she does. I think she's very single-mindedly focused on this right now. All right, as Zelia does. Um, you look around, uh -huh. and by look, I mean you feel around, because uh -huh. there is no light. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> um, there is a couple of... things that are also lodged in here. Uh, one huh? of them being um, just like a conveniently shaped uh, like metallic thing. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, using applied sciences and uh, using uh, kineticism, you use this as a wedge and a tool and through many applied theories of uh, science and energy and effort, you pry this uh, weapon from huh? Lost Anna's hands, uh, but I need you to make an acrobatics check. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Alright. Um, being so single-mindedly focused on getting it out of her hand, uh -huh. you almost fail to account for what happens when you do. <laughs> And, right. <laughs> and it uh, comes out of her hand and then, like, does, like, a bounce and a clack on the grate. And you suddenly realize in a snap of your mind that, oh, no, it's going to fall. You lurch forward at, towards the sound and mm -hmm. manage to grab it um, before it plummets in. Okay. So you have, I think it's, uh, let's see. It is tingly. Uh, yeah. I mean, she has no intention of keeping it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's, it's tingly. Uh, you also find various, um, like, in a clump of detritus, like, that, uh -huh. that's stuck in the grate. <clears throat> um, you just grab that and uh, you find a bunch of like hairpins and just like intaglio gems that had fallen out of like signet rings and stuff. Um, and you find, let's see here, a silver coin. <laughs> Alright, cool. cool. Uh, she will bag all of this and I assume cremation is decently common as a burial rate here? Uh, yes. That is something that you would have learned. Alright, um, then you're going to close Anna's eyes and, uh, And then she's going to climb back out. <laughs> right. uh, you return Anna to dust with your powerful burning hand spell. And I assume, uh, based on the plan, everyone but Twig would have left for this point? Uh, yeah, Zalia would be... like Z <laughs> After scurrying away from Michaela, Zalia has been gone for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> You three. <laughs> yeah. I think at a, at a certain point, um, if it was like 15 plus Probably, minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes or so. Um, I think, besides being legally allowed to leave, uh, we would um, <laughs> probably, uh, Michaela would probably let Twig, just like say to Twig, like, if, if she comes back up, do let her know where we're going. Um, I'm sure she could take care of herself, but just so that she can find us when she's done. Oof. 
to Ignaz. Okay. And would talk to uh, would then ask some. I assume points towards ladder in east. Uh, that that is a easier way out than the way we came down here. Indeed, uh, up there and. There's a door, it's unlocked. Uh, that's the, the way uh, we all used to come down. You chose the fun way, I should say. <laughs> but you could have simply used the door. Had we known about it, we would have. <sighs> Good luck with everything. I suppose I'll be follow. I suppose we'll be following you soon enough. Nods and uh, would head out. Just be careful on your way out, Zom. I don't think the Queen will be happy to see anyone leaving after us. Hmm. Perhaps. I now that I'm. No longer so focused on upkeeping the magic circle. I can. I probably have a trick or two in here. And he like kind of pomp pomp <laughs> uh, his hand on on his spell book. That could help me escape. Hesish will nod and carry on. Uh, my apologies for missing everything, but do stay on alert, you two. Yeah. Hope to see you shortly after the after we speak with the queen. And then Juma heads up the ladder with the rest. To the juice bar. Um. Well, how how late in the day is it? Uh, Long. Let's after. see. Let me get. Uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get the scene. Um. So I can tell you how you come out. So you climb up the ladder. <clears throat> Bump, 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 bump. And the ladder's creaky. It's it's uh, lashed together with like wooden planks and rope. Um, so you climb up, and uh, you arrive on a landing. It's got the little mushrooms and everything. Um, you walk up a flight of stairs, and there's a straight pipe that uh, turns to the right, and it's lit up with the bioluminescent glow of those mushrooms. Uh, in the bioluminescent glow, uh, you can see uh, a familiar sight of a lavender-colored kind of conical uh, mushroom. Um, it's one of those uh, tendril violet funguses from earlier. Um, you see it coming. Or sorry, you, you see it before uh, or anything, and it's something that you're keenly aware of now. So, yeah, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. It is there, bar barring your path menacingly. Look how it menaces. <laughs> <laughs> the, the grabbing kind of mushroom, you said? The fungus? Yeah, it's the. Uh, here, let me, okay. let, me, let me. Yeah. Let me show you guys where you are, because you're, because... Uh, one moment, one moment, one moment. Well. Uh, who's in front? I guess... me. Okay. Let's <laughs> that. I 
did not think this through. You're over here. Ahead of you is a ferocious <laughs> violet fungus. Yeah, I mean... I guess I'd just try and... hit it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just smack it out of the way, unless <laughs> someone else... Would you like for me to take it out before we get- Yeah, probably would be safer, but easier for you. <laughs> Alright, hmm. um... Chuman, did you take a second short rest? No, I only took one. Okay. That is five. <clears throat> oh, right, I forgot about that. <laughs> but you get three shots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. Yeah. And they're all at advantage, by the way. <laughs> I'm shooting. Nice. Because you're invisible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a twenty-one, a twenty, and All right. seventeen. All of those just barely hit the mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, roll damage, just for just for funsies. All right. Looking good. Uh, three, el eleven. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Oh uh, yeah, you get the force damage. The extra too. rest. Right. Two minutes. That is enough to defeat this this beast. What would you tell me? How this happens? Uh, after Michaela signals to shoot at the. Beast before uh, it see notices us. Uh, Chuman pulls out three arrows and takes out one of them, and first shoots it at a one of its weak points. Uh, and then, as soon as it starts to turn to look at where the whereabouts, uh, sends the tendrils out at you. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess at Michaela instead, since it doesn't see me. Um, and the second arrow actually catches the tendril before it gets uh, even halfway, pinning it to the to the back. And then a third arrow, dead center, to make it plop onto the ground. Lifeless. Flops on the ground. It appears to deflate. Dang, Chum is so cool. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that one is uh taken care of. Your lead. Thank you. Very efficient. Um, yeah, we're we'll just... Okay. You turn the corner, uh, and you see an intersection. Um, there is a left and a right. <clears throat> uh, from the left of your current standing, you see uh, a... F you see a full humanoid skeleton. Oh. Um, just kind of like float through the air. No clothes, just bones. Um, around them seem to be uh, the, the skeletons of fish and everything like that. Um, there's a uh, a bunch of like leaves slowly coming apart and it just floats past you. Like, like as soon as you turn around, it's just floating. Doesn't acknowledge you. What's in my name? I, uh... think we ought to not interfere with that. Hmm. 
Like, it's just hovering? Yep. Like, with other skeletons floating around it? That That's is... Right. Not good. Um... It's just heading down the left side? Yeah. From, it's heading west. As, uh... As you see. Uh, but from your position, it's heading to the right. As you're coming okay. out of this, this pipe. <clears throat> Well, if it's not bothering us. Yeah, did it, like... It just, like, float past in the acknowledge of presence, right? So, nope. I... It is... Disconcerning. Um... If anything... We... Could leave a note for a twig and... Azalea. Watch out for the floating skeletons. I guess. Uh, I don't have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I believe they don't need a note if they see this creature themselves. Oh, before they have eye contact. Did. I trust Good. their judgment. As you're having this conversation, it I, it like goes around, wait, like wait. It, it seems to follow the curvature of the pipe and then turns around <laughs> and is heading your direction. <laughs> it's like sort of running the wall, kind of. Yeah. Um, on the back end. Yeah, the, the wall? like an old like arcade racer game where like <laughs> slamming into the wall is faster than actually taking the turn is doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but hush if it's turning or like turning back around. Okay. And just observe it. Alright. Like let it pass. Yeah. Goes past. Float float. Weow 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 weow. Um Right, well, I suppose we don't really have much choice but to follow it. Oh, it'd be best to stay on our guard. Yeah. Michaela, what's your passive perception? <clears throat> um, very high. Very uh, high. It is uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Perception is 17. Okay, you notice some smoldering bits of um, of like this black charred substance. Uh, this like gooey substance. Like someone is like licked up and seems to be like dragging along uh, after the skeleton that's floating oh. near. And you notice that the ground, the, the, the pipe that you walk on is uh, clear and devoid of, um, like, gross grime. It's got a, like a, like a slight uh, acidic or sulfur smell upon your nose. <coughs> As the, the floating skeleton leads the way, you notice that you are in a similar pipe system. You were looking at it the, the reverse. It takes you a few yeah. minutes to realize. Uh, mm -hmm. But you are you are where you were before descending on the slip and slide. Uh, the, the floating skeleton... Uh, I think we were so close to not having to go down that whole terrible slide. I well, again, I never told any of you to follow me. I know, I know. floating skeleton um, seems to kind of like drag up and like clack its feet against the what to call it against the, the ridge of the grate and then clatters against the, the ridge of the grate and falls just a skeleton just falls on the on the on the ledge <laughs> uh -oh. the, the like skeleton and all of the other bits of like rubbish and um, other like skeletons are now here. And 
if we were to, like, what, does anything keep moving? Make a perception like, check. <laughs> that has drops of those bits? A24. No, seems good. They are motionless. Well. Did it that... pick... Go ahead. I was gonna say, did it pick up the body that we initially found when we first entered? Uh, make a perception check when you get over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty binary if I can start now. If it's um, there or not. <clears throat> yeah, you, you can walk over there. Nah, that body's not there anymore. Hmm. <laughs> One of these things down here has to be the clean, has to be uh, whatever cleaner, whatever they, however they referred to it. These sewers, that might be it. I do not know anymore. Well, we haven't seen anything else that fits the description. All right. I'd I have suppose to agree. we just carry on. I'd have to agree. Yep. Well, we were told very specifically not to interact with it, and I think we should agree with that. Alright. Yeah. All right. <laughs> As you make your way past uh, a uh, tidier version of what you traversed through, um, you are soon arrive at the gate. That has been blasted, exploded out outwards <laughs> by some form of combustion. <laughs> well, at least our exit was rather elementary. Fence. Strange floating skeletons. Right. So, um, yeah, what? Is it light outside still? <laughs> is this still day? Yeah, you, you exit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you exit the grate. It, it appears that it has been un unlocked still for you. And um, you just exit. No, no Dune Striders in sight, it seems. Um, looks like they trusted you enough to get the job done. Um, or something. Um, yeah, it, it is still light outside. Looks like you handled all that in a uh, decent amount of time. You, you successfully did not spend all day here. Nice, that's good. Right, well... Yeah. So you exit out into the grand city of Luxnox, Jewel of the Desert. The, the Garden of, of Corzin. Uh, now what would you like to do? <laughs> uh, I suppose we try and we need to try to still get an audience with her before it gets too late. Yeah, I mean, it might be later, might be better, depends. But uh, I think we try and meet back up with. Um, uh, um, Oricon? Oricon, yeah. Okay. So you yeah. Go, you go and look for Coricon. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, give me a survival check to find the crab with advantage. Uh, Alright. Advantage because you know the crab. You know his ways. You know where he'll be hiding. <laughs> crab vantage. Looks at every cat. With crab vantage. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, a 16. Yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you can find the crab. I'll take you to crab land in a moment. <laughs> Whoa. No crab land? Yeah, crab land. Alright. Let's see. Back in the Ruby Dale hideout. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> 
back in the Rubido hideout. Uh, Twig, you were being taught how to do magic. Whoa. Zom is man man manipulating the arcane weave in front of you. You can feel the energies as um, he asks you to put uh, several of your armament your armaments on the uh, on the table and uh, guides you and shows you how to uh, grasp the uh, sorry how to tie a magical arcane thread to each one and kind of man manipulate them all like puppet strings something like that um, and he uh, eventually uh, teaches you the cloud of dagger spell nice um, it is slightly modified. For one, it is Zom's Cloud of Daggers <laughs> oh. instead of Cloud of Daggers. And two, it requires um, three, uh, it requires three daggers as the material spell. You must have at least you must have three daggers as part of the material components of the spell, and it uses those for the spell's effect. Neat. Are they consumed or? Uh, depends on what happens to the daggers while they're out there. <laughs> <laughs> but ordinarily, no. You simply must have them. You should try this with uh, Foot Whisper. Oh no. <laughs> um, well, I guess... Three, three uh, bladed weapons. Okay. Does not have to be daggers, but they must be bladed weapons. The return of the watermelon slicer? <laughs> He also gives you a uh, uh, healing potion. Well, sorry, he gives you a potion. He says it's a healing potion. Okay. Uh, so you can just write like Zom's healing potion in there as well uh, on your inventory. Is it red? It is red. That works for me. Therefore, it's healing. As we all uh -huh. know, red makes HP go up. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, during this time, the cat exits. No oh, way. It, Not the cat. It jumps from rung to rung, and it befuddlingly, astoundingly, climbs this ladder. My know, goodness. And, and exits. Hmm. <laughs> Cat game. Does you, Twix see that happen? Uh, yeah, Twix sees that happen. Uh, you also like after, uh, like you also notice the other animal, uh, who is the rat next to Zom, just kind of like it just looks generally upset. <laughs> this this, this <laughs> entire time, the, this entire time, the, the rat in the cage just looks upset. I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting you notice the other animal, Zalia. <laughs> <laughs> But the the rat has been in this in this state like since you got here. You're only just now like laying eyes on it. Uh, Twig will like, motion towards the ladder and say to Zom, "Is that your cat, by the way?" Nope. I see. <laughs> All right. It showed up here uh, not long after we found it, or after we found this place. We figured it was just after the rat. Is it your rat? Yes. <laughs> Twig puts away his spell book after learning the spell. And he says, oh, this reminds me of something. I was in our old hideo and I ended up finding this. Oh. And he pulls out. Another book from his backpack. I believe this belongs to you. He's looking at the rat. 
Uh, I call him Crockett Mill. Oh, <laughs> my journal. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. I... I didn't know where I put it. Thank you. You took nods. He, uh, waves his hand over it, and there's the smell of, like, brimstone as the journal just, like, bursts into fire a bit. Oh. And... Uh, it's only for a moment, and then it burns away, and then just the fell of like that the smell of burnt citrus fills fills the air next to you, <clears throat> and he kind of smiles at you as the words are now legible, it, <laughs> and it you're reminded of how to uh, secretly uh, write down information. Where no one will ever be able to decipher it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing this to me. I. Uh, I will see if. Um, this looks largely intact. Um, allow me some time to put my thoughts to paper. See each other again. And we'll exchange notes on what we find, eh? Twig nods. That sounds like a plan. Um, is uh, Zelia out of the hole, or is she still uh, climbing back up? Zelia's still down there. It's been maybe okay. about like 30 minutes. <laughs> um, but you look behind you. And you, you hear, you hear like a wah wah wee, like triumph, like yell. Uh huh. And you look up, and then there's like some whooshing sound of of something grating, like sliding against a pipe, and whoosh, a being flies out of the pipe, lands amid the the feathers and 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 mane and uh, leathery. Uh, vest, like sort like half vest and linens, is Marash. He turns around. Ha ha! Zalman bonders him. You could have just used the door. The door's no fun. <laughs> Marash, you're you're alive. Oi. That thing had me. Let me tell you, boy, I'm alive. <laughs> That thing had me cornered. There I was, at the edge of the alleyway. Just me and that thing. But then, I knew it was the end. I summoned up every ounce of courage I had and let out a mighty roar. I must have scared it, because it turned tail and ran. <laughs> That's just like you. Well, I'm glad to know you're all right. Madash folds his arms. Mm. Clearly, you just have to show it who's boss. Madash flicks his mm. tail. <laughs> Twig, like, looks at Zom, like, looks back at Madash. So, you two, I assume you just got back here. If you haven't uh, spoken to anyone else in the meantime. Well,. The only person I would have spoken to is Jormund. Um, yes. He is unfortunately extremely dead. Yes. I'm not sure how you come back from that. He has been returned. He has been uh, reverted, destroyed. Um, the man is dust. A kind of topping you sprinkle on uh, cupcakes. That's descriptive. Um, and uh, Twig gets like kind of somber. It's like, I'm afraid the same could be said for Jess and Anna. Does that mean 
It came down here. Where's it? Take nods. Well, we're. It's gone, for now at least. We were able to defeat it. Manash looks around. I don't see it. What'd you do with the with its remains? Twig like uh, out of character. We did put it in the hole, right? It was blasted. It into blew the to pieces yeah, in the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Twig just like motions towards the hole. Manash turns. Zale, if you would like to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> A goopy fucking <laughs> covered in grime creature emerges from the pit, clamp scampering up like a fucking beast from the abyss. Now is Zelia categorized as a beast or a monstrosity? <laughs> mm -hmm. Your decision. <laughs> it's up to interpretation. It's back! Ah! Oh! <laughs> Manash. Manash, uh, wait, no. <laughs> you can see him just uh, grab something at his side, and then like there's this kind of like claw-looking weapon coming out of his hand. <laughs> Zom opens his spellbook, and like three glyphs start showing up <laughs> as, your as your companions get ready to uh, attack. Wait, that's not the monster. Like I know, I know, it might look like a monster, but. That's not what was chasing us. And Precipitation cannot get rid of Goop, so she's just... Goopy. She's covered in sludge. Make a Persuasion check. Uh, Twig. Pers uh, Zalia, roll Performance. <laughs> oh no. I mean, she's not even, like, trying to play it up. This is just what she looks like right now. Okay, I get you. <laughs> Alright. Well, let's go and roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twig, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, wait, I can do roll all NPCs. Oh, Twig, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twig's just gonna get between. Zeli and Madash, like, put his arms out and say, I know what it looks like, but she's a friend. Everyone just calm down. Let's not be too hasty. You can see Madash has already lowered his hips, and he's he's he has taken a step toward, <laughs> towards uh, Goop Zelia. Um, <laughs> but you, being quicker on the draw, uh, than both of your com uh, companions uh, of your group, of th than both of Rubido. Uh, sure, you interpose yourself. Manesh is, uh, you, Manesh is not going to attack. He lowers he lowers his weapon and then just like kind of like swipes his his hip and holsters whatever he had. Um, all right, sure, you win. End combat. <laughs> <laughs> You win the you, you yeah. win the fight. <laughs> one, one turn kill. Zelia <laughs> is sorry. Take just like breathes a sigh of relief. Zelia is going to basically stagger over to the stable, pull out her baggie of hair top hair hair bins and gemstones and the dagger and just plop it on the table. I dare say your fr <laughs> I dare say your friend is similar to the <laughs> gelatinous cube that cleans the pipes. Yes, uh, we're acquainted. <laughs> uh, Twig is like peering over Zelia's goop shoulder okay. at the at the bag on the table. Um, let's see. Zelia, you have... What did I tell you you get? Um, you told me I get the dagger. I get a small baggie of... What's it? 
uh, I believe it was hair hair uh, clips and uh, rings with uh, gemstones that have been removed from rings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And the dagger. This... And the what? And the dagger. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Goop Zelia puts the like just this dagger, familiar looking dagger, um, on the table, spills out a bunch of like intaglio gems and. Um, just like various accoutrements that are <laughs> lumped in with hairpins, just people that have lost things in the in the grates yep. above. Um, and also the coin, uh, the silver coin, uh, which I guess you didn't know was silver. Yeah. Was. <laughs> the uh, the, the coin that, that, that would be included. Yeah, that there was a coin. Um, you are able to see now in the light that is on uh, Zom's workshop <clears throat> that it is not a coin. It is a uh, what you call it? It is a uh, like a cloak clasp, a brooch, huh. um, and it is not unlike your own uh, that you have been gifted from your mother. Hmm. Uh, it is a uh, crescent moon, hold, uh, kind of like holding a heart. Oh, she's gonna feel bad about that now. <laughs> but she's gonna. For now, just leave it there and let them look at it. Mm. Take the decision. It's kind of standing there. She'll back off and let Twig get closer. Um, Twig, Twig would recognize the dagger right away. And he would, like, gingerly pick it up. Was this from... And he, like, looks at the hole. So we would look at uh, Zom and Madash, and like then just back down at the dagger. Would either of you two mind if I if I took this with me? It would mean a lot to me. No, I... <laughs> By all means, I'll take it with you. That's, uh... That's definitely bookmark. And his dagger. Twig turns to Zelia. Did you go all the way down there just to get this for me? He kind of... Doesn't respond. She's just <laughs> looking. <laughs> She's still like gooped up, right? Yeah. Twig's gonna give her a hug anyway. A goopy hug is shared. I think Twig's still gooped up too. Yeah. We're all gooped up here. And we're all gooped up here. <laughs> you will, after a few seconds. Hesitantly get a hug back. <laughs> Twig will like do his best to somewhat clean himself up and then put the dagger in his bag. The dagger. It is a unique magic weapon. Um, you know that it, it, like you know, it's magical. It is a unique magic weapon in that it can get dirty, um, but it has uh, several abilities that you've seen Anna use over uh, over her career. <laughs> uh, you know about one or two of them. Uh, one of them is you can. Uh, spin it in your fingers and it will uh, point like a compass towards uh, magnetic north <clears throat> and um, it can um, 
Uh, it has the power to open uh, any book. Ooh. Without triggering um, any magical traps or anything. Physical traps, not so much as uh, you know from uh, one of the last times it was used. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dirty, but you know it to be a uh, uh, like a pinkish color. It looks kind of like a um, like a quill. The the blade looks kind of like a feather quill. Um, Nice. Twig like a uh, weighs it in his hand a few times before uh, putting it away. Thank you, Zelia. No, nod. <laughs> What else was on the table? Is it the gems and the uh, the brute? Hair, hair clasp, yeah. Yeah, random gems, um, various like accessories for one person, like hairpins, um, bracelets, whatever, just stuff that people tend to lose when mm -hmm. in a city. Um, and there is a cloak clasp um, that uh, presumably belonged to Anna. Twig will take a look at that as well. Okay, it's a silver crescent. It's it's ultra dirty. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, silver crescent moon uh, holding a harp in the middle. Twig will try to clean it up a little bit, but I'm I imagine his cloak's about as dirty as the clasp is. Cloak is about as dirty as the clasp is. Um, but uh, you touching it and like giving it a couple rubs. Um, it cleans up very easily, just oh. and you notice that your cloak is also clean. Oh. We're all going to have one of these fucking clasps by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, looks down at himself. Huh. Uh, Madash, I think you should give this a rub too, <laughs> considering you just came down the pipes. Madash looks offended for a moment and then looks at himself. Like, sniffs his armpits. Gives a little swipe. The the <laughs> the lion man is sparkling clean within moments. Would you like to as well, Zelia? He'll kind of slowly nod and do that. Goop be gone. Goop be gone. She is now the nice schmooze, multi-eyed, goopless, goopless, <laughs> withering out of my lane. <laughs> Manish puts a claw on your on your shoulder, Twig. He looks at you, like spins you around, looks at you, and he squeezes your shoulder. He doesn't say anything. Just looks at you. He just murmurs, thanks. <laughs> Anytime. Well, where to next, Zom? Zom and the gnome just kind of shuffles and looks around. Well, we ought to pack a little. Maybe set crocodile for you. Oh. Time for us to start roaming again, Madash. <clears throat> Twig, let us meet again. We'll we'll find each other when we need us.
And twig nods. It was good to see you two again. It was. Learning that spell. Learning that spell from you is just like old times. I'd say I hope you don't have to have to use it, but let's be honest. The dead walk among us. Of course you're going to use it. That's why I told it to you. <laughs> Keep yourself safe. And you as well, you too. Go on then, your your mates are waiting. We'll we'll be out sometime soon too. Twig nods and gives the two of them uh, one last group hug. Bailey is gonna kind of bow a little bit. Gnome, the Kenku, and the Leonin all yeah. share a moment of solidarity and comfort. We hug over their fractured group and lost leader. And after that, Turg will start to head out. Right. And I'll wave bye to the three of them uh, Zom, Madash, and Crocodile. <coughs> Crocodile just looks furious. <laughs> um, on the way, Twig will explain to Zelia that the the rest of the group was gonna meet up with the Queen and we'd all meet together at the juice bar. Oh, nod fully. <clears throat> all right. So you guys managed to get out of the pipe system. Uh, you realize that. You are very close. Uh, as you exit, like you climb up the ladder, you go up the landing, go up the stairs. Uh, you're very close to where you slid down the the pipe slide. Um, mm. But maneuvering through a very clean, um, if a bit like burny smelly pipe system, you are able to get back to uh, the entrance, and look around, and start making your way towards the juice bar. Yes. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, meanwhile, <clears throat> a grand up. adventure. <laughs> the search for the Aldani continues. Crab time? The, the Aldani, the crab? The search for the Aldani continues as you walk around the streets of Luxnox. But. An excellent what? survival role. <laughs> and having uh, two people that are trained somewhat uh, in the arts of locating creatures. Uh, rangers. <laughs> Uh, and also, and also, like recalling the last things you said to Korakon, where no we're hyping him up and uh, mm -hmm. like getting him to, like, we're, we're hyping him up and like getting him into um, learning him to go take a sword training class. Or yeah, something. Get, getting a sword training class and like learning how to fight and everything. Oh. You find just such a thing. <laughs> oh. Let's go. We love to see self improvement. Let's see here. So, as you uh, walk down a path, for, mm -hmm. as, as you walk down a path, um, there like there's a couple um, buildings around. You're just, you're just kind of meandering your way, and then you hear clang, clink, ringing, ringing in the air, and. Uh, you see there, Korakon. Da -dum 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 -dum. Uh, he stands amidst a boxed out sandy arena. Uh, he's got a sword belt around around his uh, chitinous waist, and his, his in his left claw grips an iron kopesh. In fact, let's get some cool music going on. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, is this good? Yeah! Uh, I did not preload this one, so it may take a little while. <laughs> Um, and his left claw grips an iron coal patch. There, there's many other weapons that are uh, scattered and strewn about in the sands, um, like spears, glaives, axes. He appears to have a partner whom he clashes iron with, a fit and muscular man with sleek silver hair. His bladed mace rings out with a clang, followed by barked commands on proper form and stance. Just boom, boom. They clash. Uh, and then uh, Korokon gets like jabbed in in the abdomen. He's like, and, and points out that his feet are all wrong. You have to stand in this uh, in, in this form. And then, uh, as you all saunter up, um, after they after both of these combatants reel from a clash, the man turns and. Uh, realizes that they are being watched and he calls out Oi! If you're looking for a show I'll have to charge you admission! Korkon turns and they both that, to him. I... I'm sorry to report that my brain registered that as the same the same fucking cadence as Kuno. Okay, Looking for a show, I'm gonna have to charge ya! Oh, there's the music. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Uh... Oh, well... We were just looking for a acquaintance of ours, a friend. Seems we found him. Please, don't let us interrupt. The people you mentioned, the ones that spurred you on to get this to get this lesson. Kinda waves you all closer. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you've been talking about us, have you? Skull. Only favorably, I promise. Well, so, how's the training been? Fruitful, I hope? Well... Yes, yes and no. I... Yeah. feel that I'm not taking well to any of these weapons. Mm -hmm. Kinda like, clumsily holds this, uh... Claws. Well, perhaps you are more of a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Isn't this hand-to-hand? -hand? Close quarters gone bad. Oh no, I mean quite literally. Those claws of yours, they could do some damage. Could fare well with them. More than just using a sword, especially with the size of your mandibles. Well, that's true. Korokon, you were so eager to try out weaponry. Perhaps it would be better off if you just use your clobberers. But all of you have weapons. I wanted to be like you. Athalia doesn't. She's not there. Oh, well, wait, no, Varan, she does. <laughs> you have the most weapons out of any one of us, actually. Yeah, she, but she's just <laughs> on an unhinged little stabby gremlin, but not an actual weapon. <laughs> <laughs> well... This is a... walking stick. And I don't believe... I don't got believe prestige technically. I mean, even if you're brush, but... Yes, I... well, I passed a thing or two with it, but it's certainly not a martial weapon. 
when it's more attention about... goes Hi. to pastiche, the the trainer is just like staring at pastiche or or behind them. <clears throat> he just he jabs a finger at at, at them and just boy. What's Boy. the ladle for? Uh, well... You see, uh... It's... A memento... For a fallen friend. It's huge is what it is. Yes, but it... Hmm. Within good reason, at least. I guess I can't say it means a lot, but it does mean something to me. Korakon, these people have... Maybe you... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Maybe if you want to be like them, something more exotic would, would better fit you. Well, that's... There are certain fundamentals of fighting that are rather universal. A weapon is merely... A... Way of expressing those fundamentals. It isn't as important as it might seem. Finding a way that, well, that suits you is more important than anything else, really. You'd be surprised what you can make into a weapon. Or rather, what will work for defending yourself. We're not trying... <laughs> we do not need to become a soldier or anything. We're not going off to war, but... That means to defend yourself is important. <laughs> I once met... I once met this strange group, each one of them with really different household objects as weapons. Master of their fighting styles, I suppose. One had a fishing rod. One was a shepherd. I think one was simply using their frying pan. Plant post. Very strange group. Got a frying pan, Korokon, if you want to trial one of them. And it's only a day, don't get discouraged. Rather, it's only been an afternoon. It's quite time to solidify your own style. Hmm. I'd say. I'd say... Boy, do you want to help Korokon? Uh, I've been sparring with him for the better part of a few hours. Uh, we could mix things up and I could... I could have a uh, different perspective and watch uh, if one of you would like to spar with him. Korokon kind of like perks up at the idea. I mean, like, quickly looks over. Shuman looks over to Michaela. I... honestly would like to, but I do believe we have other engagements at the moment. Uh, yes, uh, the Queen. We finished her task. If you would like to complete your delivery, we were going to look for her. Hopefully she had completed hers as well. Alright. I'm ready to go right away. I'm willing to put a... Uh, give you a... a late, give you a sparring session at a later date. Uh, 
I don't believe they'll be joining us for the meeting, but uh, we will rejoin them later. We've had uh, a few complications interfere, so. Zoas had to go his separate ways. It's important things for him to take care of. Perhaps we shall meet again on the path. Perhaps we shall. Who knows? But for now, I be just us for going to meet with the Magic Queen. I am sure that it's all right. It is all right with me, but I don't understand. You already <laughs> made delays and arrangements so that we could all go as a group, and yet we still go segmented. A lot has happened, Korakon. Things have come up. Alright. Are we going now? You mentioned a juice bar. Are we getting yeah. juice? That will be we... later. some more lessons. I'll teach you some cool tricks. Gorkon joins the party. Nice. <laughs> Halo, if it were like walking away, the Halo would be like, oh, you see that? There's a problem. You're finding someone who will just teach you fancy tricks, those aren't very useful. You need someone who will teach you the fundamentals. He's like going on about like, Nesha spend a week just teaching how to properly stand. Stuff like that. I, um, one of the first things he was attempting to teach me was proper form. Mm. Well, I'm sure you've picked up some basics, but... I would like to show you one later if you don't mind. But, uh, task at hand. Where, around this time of day, would the Merchant Queen still be out, or would it be wisest for us to just go straight to. Uh. There's a question. Uh, out of character. There's like a. I guess. Governmental building. Like a yeah. pallet, palace, or... Yeah, there is a governmental building. Um, it's in the north of Luxanox. It doesn't look necessarily like a palace, but it is a larger mm -hmm. building. Um, and it is, okay. you know, uh, it is decorative, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not like huge, sprawling, super large palace. Um, but it is definitely the largest... Uh, say house. It, like it, it, it is a house. Zulzare describes it as a house. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, should we go to the? Uh, well, I suppose office and wait if she's not there. If yesterday is anything like today. understand it that you were successful in your task. So she yes. be earlier available. Mm. 
Well, we both know until we check, I suppose. Let us be off then. Oh, I must collect the all important parts. It is at the end. Let us stop there first. Right? Yeah, it's a quick detour. head back to the faint badger uh, and just quickly pop off boop, 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 grab the thing boop, 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 boop. Uh, you take a glance around the room uh, it is empty and then there is an out of order sign on the kitchen mm. um, the the bartender is sitting on a stool uh, the bartender, and also you've learned, uh, like, also, like, front of house for the whole hotel. Like, they're the, the front destination as well. Uh, just kind of, like, sitting there, uh, hands folded together, and they're just kind of staring at their hands. They don't even acknowledge you. Or if they do, it's barely, and, um, when you are not looking at them. <coughs> That curse isn't contagious, Pestish will say under their breath. They haven't touched the stone. I don't see why it would linger around for anyone else. This just seems like oh, quite the blow for the loss of a single chef. The chef was the lifeline. All the more makes sense. A loss of. Well, this is Lux Knox, the supposed one of the safest places in all of Corsair. They might not be as. Uh. used to loss be it even just one as maybe the rest of the continent has to be right mm. too many seri- city areas even though they are claim to be safe. Uh, many things happen underneath. It's very it's easy. Like... It seemed quite literally in this case. Yeah. Well, shall we continue? Coincidence, uh, locate Twig and Zalian um, along your way. Just, we have in the past by the, the J bar, and uh, we're like, well, well, we haven't met up with them yet, so just might as well tag along. Coracon Intel, you've got your crustacean. Um, so, let's see. We're heading to uh, Zozare's house. So, uh, striding towards 
the northern end of Luxnox. Um, towards Zozaria's house, as she put it. Uh, taking in the sights. There's, there's people coming and going. There's merchants preparing their wares through stalls. Uh, there's boatmen ferrying people around through the canals with their poles. Uh, children running around, performers earning their day's take, but juggling dangerous objects, and uh, above all, an, an abundance of food. It's like maybe two, three, four in the afternoon, um, so everyone is still bustling about, um, stopping by to sample anyone's latest creation and uh, those offering passing bites. Uh, even though people move around and visit, one constant of the nation of Alga is everyone ensuring that anyone has their hunger levels monitored. Uh, truly, it's, it's an oasis of satiety, and uh, you've been no stranger to it yourselves, having supped upon delicacies and interesting meals, uh, and gazed at the curious concoctions since your arrival as well, uh, with Korakon's Mile High Burger, <laughs> uh, Twigs, interesting concoctions, dual fisting, melty cheese, all that stuff. Uh -huh. uh, the smells across Luxnox are delightful. Cook food, fruity wine, um, and as you arrive at the entrance to the largest building in Alga, the scent of donuts leads its way towards your noses. Um, there's a pair of dune striders beneath a parasol. They give you a wave of acknowledgement as you pass the gate and into a courtyard. It is in this courtyard where Korakon like comes in behind you. Uh, that all of the smells are overpowered with like the clean, crisp olfactory of fresh water. And checking your surrounds, they're in a mostly enclosed space. There's the sky above you, uh, the, the walls of the buildings to your cardinal directions form the courtyard. And ahead in the center is a large and circular gurgling fountain around which are placed many picnic tables and other spots to sit amid the greenery. Uh, and greenery indeed. There's grass, trees, shrubs, plants in such abundance and in one place that the likes of anyone except Zalia would likely be surprised by it. There's the sun that glimmers across the stone uh, you walk on. Uh, a few steps in, and you can see a Dune Strider uh, exit from the north building and jog towards your group. Hail! I say hail! Azalea, minor illusion, the piece of hail to hit him in the head. <laughs> uh, is it from a position that they can see, or is it from like behind them? To yes. Get the it's a position they can see. Okay, well, they're gonna make an acrobatics check. No, sorry, a dexterity saving throw. It is a single small piece of hail. Let's see, this one has... What, what is your uh, spell DC? Uh, I believe it is 15. Okay, they fail to realize it, and they are splatted with nothing, because it's an illusion. <laughs> but you can yes. see them kind of like jolt and like try to protect their their head and their face with their arms so that with their, their wild curls and uh, Dune's right armor going everywhere and then they kind of they can't get out of the way fast enough and then they brace for impact and they just stop stone still waiting for something that doesn't go and then after like a moment or so they look around look behind them see nothing and looks at the group uh Hello. Yes, uh, how unseemly of me. Um, sorry, uh, <laughs> just continues jogging. <laughs> um, you must be the, <clears throat> you must be the group that the, with, with a delivery for the Merchant Queen, eh? Uh, she sent word, but she's, she's not back yet. Uh, something about one of the raptors for the, for the race, uh, got loose and ended up puffing a crate full of powdered hot chocolate. Um, please have a seat anywhere you like and rest yourselves. She'll arrive soon. This is this uh, declaration is punctuated by uh, more than a few nods, and the uh, two Australians like licks their lips. 
<laughs> Tell me, um, does the Martian Queen attend every matter personally in the city? As many as she can. Hmm. Naturally, I mean, uh, it, it's. Uh, there's. there's um, what's the word? There's plenty of delegation, uh, but as much as she can. She's quite adept at solving matters. Uh, so sometimes she requests that we defer to uh, her judgment, and so we do. She, she has the run of the place, you see. So naturally, why wouldn't we? Fair enough. Quite ambitious for a merchant, especially with how many issues there could be throughout this city. Some days are hard, but some days are light. Is the worst. <laughs> Sometimes the worst that happens is <laughs> a child has a stomachache. I see. She would personally attend to a matter that trivial. Sometimes. She just shrugs. Huh. Well, if, uh, if you'll excuse me, um... Uh, I have to get back to work. Uh, so. Bye. Uh, like, bids and like half bows and looks around, nods at Coracon and uh, exits stage left. And she must be quite busy. Yeah. She didn't even ask our names. Well, she didn't though. She might have been in front of them, I suppose. Well, we make ourselves comfortable. Looks. So, Zelia already moving in a direction. Uh, please have some discretion. Zelia, this. We you are. You sit on a bench. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but with your illusions, we are guests here right now. Prefer not to cause any. Thalia, minor illusion to cage around Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, you're trapped. Roll my eyes. Just step through it. <laughs> the, the, the cage morphs into an octopus that just kind of follows you. <laughs> I'm behind, sure. Behind you is a JPEG of an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it is steel bar co colored. Naturally. Uh huh. Well, I'm sure you could keep her occupied that way. Eh, it'd be less trouble. Just... Not saying you're not allowed to do anything, just. But. Not cause too much trouble. Uh, just sit under this. Whatever. I assume yeah, these are like a hit on your head. Yeah, it's like a little gazebo. Gazebos, yeah. yeah they're, they're around there are many picnic benches, seats, stools, benches. Um, there's area. There's like gazebos that are sheltered from the from the sun. Um, as you look around from the fountain. Uh, churns out like little uh, straights and channels of water that seem to deliver uh, water to all the green area around you. It's a quaint and pleasant area. Mm. <laughs> Impressive. And you have some. You appear to have some time to yourself. If there's anything you would like to do or talk about to each other. Um, if not, we can move. move on. Vela is just kind of curling in a corner right now. 
Ooh. Twig, is everything all right with your friends? Are you feeling any better? I forgot I was muted. <laughs> Twig thinks to himself quietly for a few moments and says, Well, tensions were high for a little bit, but things are better now. Obviously not not good, but of about course, as good I as they could be. Don't mean to imply you should be over it yet, but... Back there will there be no issue with this meeting, yes? No, there, there won't be an issue. That's good to hear. Back there in the sewers, thank you for pulling me out of there. I wasn't in my right mind. Of Seeing course. her like that. So he looks around the courtyard. I've lived here my whole life, but I've never seen anything like this. I guess I've never been in here before. Have you ever been to Luxnox before? Mm. If I have, it was a brief visit. Mm. Probably making an appearance for some haughty totty prince or princess, king or queen. I have not been here for leisure. I see. Well, for what it's worth, I hope you've enjoyed it, despite some of the circumstances. It is still my home. It's nice. I... Hope we have a more time to relax after this is all over. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we are quite overdue for some relaxation. Well, uh, Korokan, what will you do after? After we speak with the Merchant Queen. I believe I will become a free agent at that point. I'll go... I'll go... I'll go where the money takes me. There's a deal to be made somewhere. My expertise will see it through. <laughs> right. Or, sure. Or perhaps the merchant queen will have a follow up task, at which point it'll be whatever she wills it. Right. I can understand. After all, it is part of your job, wherever the money takes, or rather the money goes, yeah, you shall be with it. I'm a H you have something else on your mind?
Hmm. Oh, well, yes, sir. Uh, I suppose from considering the circumstances and situations we've been through, uh, carrying on is something that we uh, are more accustomed to. I know those matters uh, far too well in my own circumstances. to the courtyard and then she's just uh, she's light on her feet and looks around and then acknowledges and then uh, in a um, in a smooth motion she just turns around and like walks backwards a bit uh, slowing to, to a bit she fills her chest with lungs just Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm here. <laughs> um, we didn't wait long at all. It's no issue. Uh, are you um? Are you fed? I I don't see any any dishes. Did you not order anything from the restaurants? The round r restaurants. The golden lioness's ears like, and she just points up all behind her and uh, to the east. Over there. Ah, well, we just sat here and conversed with each other. Uh, we weren't waiting for too long. Oh. Oh. Alright, well, um, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Is there anything that I can get you? I'm okay, yeah, thank you. I could use some water. Water from the right up? Mm, I would be fine. Thank you, though. Alright, well, actually, I think I do need to refill my butter skin. Actually, I think we all do. Alright, well, uh, you can do so from this fountain. The water is crisp, uh, crisp and, and clear and uh, drinkable. Delicious, or you can have some uh, from the from the jugs uh, in uh, in the restaurant. <clears throat> oh, sorry, been running. All right. I hope you weren't running for us. I was. Of Wait, course, it. I was. I was just so eager to meet with you. How, how could I not mm -hmm. be excited? Eva. For what it's worth, I'm sure we would be fine waiting a little longer. But, well, you're here now, so let's... Yes. Let get some... Jinx and get this... and get this started. heads into the restaurant and just kind of pokes her head in and she just says excuse me um a, 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 a round of waters uh one two three uh seven i think 
Um, many, many watchers, please bring them into, um, into, into, into my chamber. Thanks. And then, after getting confirmation from the group, you all head into, uh, you follow the Golden Lioness, um, To the north quarter, uh, into a very large building. Um, as you enter in through the doorway, there is a much larger archway, um, and all of the halls are supremely spacious. Um, there's bits of uh, gold and like this dark brown, uh, kind of bronze color um, decorating the halls, and as you enter into the main hall, you can see uh, lit up with torches, uh, just all along the way. At the very end is a large uh, throne-like chair, um, and she turns around and smiles, and uh, Zillary puts her hood down. Uh, her ears just kind of like flick bloop, <laughs> back up. She gives you all a warm smile. This is, uh, well. <clears throat> Welcome! Shall we begin? And let's throw in tonight's session. <laughs> no, okay. like, shall we end? <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> but not before your glass of water? <laughs> <laughs>